Okay, here we have one of three videos. First of which is final drive from an R1100, the GS1996. As you can see, there's the output shaft up the back there, coming out from the motor, which of course is connected with a drive shaft that goes through that tunnel, if you like. So the output shaft goes through where your final drive attaches to but um, anyway these are the pivot pin both fixed and adjustable bearings that are contained let's move this around for you that's the final drive they're both contained here I've taken them out and as you can see I have placed new Races in there, okay. I can take the old ones out, the needle roller bearings. I've now put in new races, these will be phosphor bronze bushes, tapered bushes to meet the tapered race bearings. There you have it on both ends. Now that one there's done. All the best now. Second video while you have the final drive and drive shaft out up in here. I'll show you right up in there is your clutch actuator rod just in there and that bit there in that housing there. The mount is a needle roller bearing. It's not very well sealed and moisture gets in there. What happens is it loads that bearing up because it's not able to move freely anymore and puts load on the actuator. What happens is here, where the cable, clutch cable drum, attaches to the tip of the actuator, it breaks off because there's too much load there. It snaps. And in the middle of two horse towns, you're going nowhere. Video number three. What you need to lubricate. You need to lubricate splines on the output shaft see that's the engine there the back of the engine you need to lubricate those splines it's got 80,000 kilometers on this bike and look at that they've still got a good edge on those splines they're not rounded hardly any anywhere but this bike here was not abused and it was not used off-road so that needs to be lubricated and then moving right along. That's the other female end. That's the female end to the output shaft, okay? That needs to be lubricated a good grease. Starborgs, I think they recommend. And here, the other end also needs to be done. And as you can see, perfect. Perfect splines all the way around. 80,000, but just road use. No off-road adventure use, just road adventure. There you have it. Video number four, it doesn't end there. We have other bearings on the swing arm. These are also fastened and retained. This swing arm's retained by two bearings. Okay, we've also had new bearings press fitted into there.
sorry, they were all cleaned up. They were all taken out. That little lip seal that you see there, I very gently pick that out. And I clean all the old grease out of there vigorously with the greaser until there's no old grease left. And I hit it with brake cleaner. So under the other side there, there's no seal. It's all open. It's in there, it's all clean. It's all clean. No grit or dirt gets in there, so that's there. But anyway, look. Um, yep, that was all clean and brake cleaner until they were dry. And then I spun them. They were still nice and quiet after 80,000 Ks, hardly anywhere. And I repacked them with grease and press fitted that seal back in there on both ends. And of course, no irregularities. No grinding, smooth as silk. So there you have it, they need to be done too. Okay, here we have the drive shaft. Here we have a little red dot. Over here we have a red dot. So those two red dots in parallel aligned all the way through to there, red dot all the way through there, red dot. Let's see the formation here. See the formation there. Miro image of that one. That's what you call phasing of the drive shaft. Very important phasing. Because if they're not aligned or in unison or phased, if you like. If they're not, you're going to have vibration issues. I don't know if the vibration will be enough to upset the apple cart, but um, the bike in operation, underway, in gear, loaded up, will not be as smooth as what it had been. So, phase your drive shafts.